Hey everybody, it's your Brother Zen bringing you more messages of love from above and today's reading is going to be for the new moon alert for the new moon in Pisces that is coming up next Saturday on March 13th. It'll be around 3.21 a.m. Mountain Standard Time so wherever else you're in the world you can kind of see when that full moon is going to be at its climax there for you. But before I jump into that, I also wanted to just say a big thank you to all those who just provided so much support and encouragement for me this last week. Um, last Saturday I made an announcement about that I'm offering uh, my services to the world now and I'm excited to do that. Um, so thank all of you who subscribe to my channel and um, my brothers and Facebook page and um, all of you, of course, who ordered readings from me. Um, it just meant the world to me. Sometimes you just get hit with so much love that you just don't realize how much people care and so just know that I, I sincerely love you all and I so appreciate that. And as a kind of a thank you and a celebration for my first week, I am going to offer a free drawing for a two question recorded video rec uh, reading. Um, all you have to do is have liked my Breda Zen Facebook page. Um, and also subscribed to my YouTube channel. Um, if you just make a comment on this video down below, um, just saying, yes, um, you know, I'd love a reading, or yes, enter me into the reading, you know, just, or even just any comment on this video um, down below um, will get you an entry into that free reading. So I'll give it about a week um, till the new moon, and then on the new moon, um, I will do a drawing to see who the lucky winner is, and I'm excited um, to do that. All right, so back to the new moon alert. Um, and these cards, just so you know, are from this book, the Moonology Oracle Guidebook. And so I'm going to do a three uh, pick a card reading. So you can choose one, two, or all of them if you want. Um, I am by no means going to keep anyone from getting as much information from our Creator and our guides and angels, you know. We can use all the information we can get these days, so definitely love that. <clears throat> so the last full moon in Pisces would have been around September 2nd of last year. So whatever was going around that time um, is... Um, you know, whatever we were focusing on for that full moon is kind of coming to this place with this new moon where we can look back and say, see, okay, is there anything that I want to change from what I accomplished or what I was trying to do over the last six months? So this will be the time for the new moon in Pisces for, you know, planting new seeds, making changes, that type of thing. So where the full moon last year that was about like finding inner balance between like responsibility you know like the earthly responsibility and our dreams so that balance in between those two um, it was a time to kind of deep dive into our emotions um, and we also had like a heightened connection to the other side you know to the our spiritual side to our higher self to the creator our angels our spirit guides, our ancestors, our loved ones. So um, now we're coming to this place with this Pisces new moon where it's kind of like a time for, you know, like it says here, a new start is coming. It's a restart. It's a rebirth. It's a revival. And especially with Pisces, this just brings in just hope um, and, you know, faith and trust in the other side. So as we, you know, Pisces just can really connect to the higher um, worlds if we want to. And so when you connect with those higher realms, you can trust your gut. Um, you can trust your high heart, uh, you know, not the fear, emotional, um, you know, fear-based, conditional love heart, but trust that higher, unconditionally loving heart. And then what I'm gonna do, so for these two, since these are the new moon cards, I'm gonna ask what would you like us to know about our rebirth? You know, um, so I'm gonna kind of focus on, on that message for those two. And so for this one, I'm gonna ask, 
where can we use guidance on our inner balance since that's what it was about then. So these will be about what would you like us to know about our rebirth and this will be about um, you know what kind of guidance on our inner balance you would like to give us. So um, go ahead and that would be number one. Number two, number three, I'll have those um, time stamped in the description box below so if you want to jump to one of them you can click that otherwise we're gonna go ahead and leap into number one all right for those of you that chose the new moon in Pisces which says meditate and contemplate this is reading number one this is for you so go put that over there and I thought we'd start off by picking a queen of the moon oracle since we're all about the moon for this reading today and we'll start off just to get a an idea of the first general message for you. There's some shuffling. I just always love to thank the Creator ah, just for the unconditional love that you have for us. We welcome you here to bring messages that you like to bring to us here um, for today, especially for this one. Just what do you want us to know about our rebirth for the new moon? We also welcome all our guardian angels, our angels, our spirit guides, our loved ones who have gone to the other side, our ancestors, and just any unconditionally loving beings that want to help bring those messages of love, those messages of unconditional love. We welcome you and we thank you all for being here. All right, so what would you like us to know first? Would you like us to know about our rebirth? Okay, let's feel this one's coming out here. <clears throat> this is card number 42. And this is the masculine, it's the lunar god. Sorry about the glare on there. It's, it's bright and shiny today, so I have my windows wide open. <laughs> All right, and let's take a look here and see what message comes with that oracle card. <clears throat> so for this card here, it talks about it's time to step forward and lead. Be the leader in your own life. You have more power than you think. It's time to formally, formally learn more, enroll in a course, or learn a new skill. Offer your protection to someone weaker than yourself. Take steps to improve your health and vitality. <clears throat> and the little phrase that comes with this says, may the positive attributes of the masculine align with me. So this could be, you know, no matter what, you know, gender you relate to, this is about finding that inner masculine inside you. Because we all have um, divine feminine and divine masculine within us and everything in between and even things we don't know, you know, with our earthly brain. But um, there's this, you know, power within us, this masculine side power. And it says, while lunar gods are rare, usually their realms are the solar. They are conspicuous when they appear. The Australian Aboriginal deity of the Wanarua tribal area, I'm going to murder this, I'm sure it's Baiame, B-A-I-A-M-E, encourages us to observe the laws of the land and to appreciate the beauty around us. Baiame, uh, again, I probably murdered that, sorry, is depicted with having big eyes and no mouth, teaching us that sometimes beauty does not need to be spoken about, just witnessed with the eyes of our head and of our heart. The Norse god Mani, the moon himself, teaches us to be wise, and uh, it's about the passage of time. The Mesopotamian Sin shows us how to ask about the future and how important it is to protect the weak, and there are many more. The traditional positive attributes of the masculine, such as strength, physical vitality, power of will, shielding and protection of the weak, are important for anyone to adopt, no matter their gender or orientation. Should you pull this card, it is asking you to step up into your power, your uniqueness, and offer your guidance to those who may need it. And the companion stone um, is black opal, if you like the crystals in those. But I love that. So, 
you know, what a wonderful thing about, you know, a new birth is you have to take lead to allow your unique gifts, the unique you to come out and be, allow that power to come to protect others, to be that guidance, to be that, um, I almost feel like lead by example too, you know, lead by your heart and by that, you know, that powerful being that you are. I also want to pull a card here from the Return of Spirit deck just to get another message overall for the new moon for you. For those that chose stack number one or card number one or reading number one. <laughs> All right, creator, what else would you like us to know? What else would you like us to know about our new rebirth for the new moon? What would you like us to focus on? What would you like us to know? Okay. Mm, simplicity. I love that uh, after being in a corporate life for, gosh, in customer service for 30, 40 years, I like simple, you know, <laughs> keep things simple. Um, don't get too complicated. Don't get too much into your head. And let's see what the little book has here to say too. Get you some additional messages here. There it is. Yes, life can sometimes become very complicated. The simplicity card comes when the demands of life start to overwhelm us. And it's time to get back to basics. It's time to take a time out so you have the space to breathe and the quiet to think. It's time for a full assessment of what is and is not working in your life right now. Are you over fulfilling? I'm sorry, are you over filling your plate with too many tasks and errands? Are you involved in a complicated or emotionally draining relationship? Perhaps you've been working too much or taking too many classes, leaving no spare time for you. The simplicity card comes to ask that you give your life an evaluation. Take the time out you need and start to get clear about what brings you sustenance in your life. While life may never be easy, your life does need to allow for a sense of ease. We can lose our sense of self and our inner connection to spirit when we're overwhelmed with the demands and happenings of the world around us. Spirit is calling you to begin making yourself a priority in your own life. They're asking you to, um, that you put yourself and those things which help you feel closer to source in front of everything else. You need a reprieve from the chaotic and hectic energy you're experiencing right now. When you're in touch with yourself and with Source, it helps to make life more manageable. It helps you to feel steady on your feet and aids you in removing those things that which do not align with your highest good. It also frees your energy so you have plenty to give to those things which you do, you do choose to keep in your life. I love that for you because um, <clears throat> when we connect with the Creator and we connect with that unconditional love inside us and we do that self-care to take care of ourselves, we fill up and then we overflow out to the world. And then with this masculine card here, that is like telling you, allow yourself to give to the world, you know, fill up first. So, you know, get back to basics, take care of you. Don't um, drain yourself first because then you don't have any energy to give. It's like build up that um, foundation in your worth based on the unconditional love of the creator of all things. Let that love fill you up and then however you want to express that love to the world, then take action, do that, express that love, be that love to the world. And I love this, this is the perfect time, you know, um, got about a week before the new moon so you can evaluate what is working in your life, what is stressing you out and what is not. You know, um, I love um, my roommate has this wonderful thing she discovered where it's like um, whatever makes you feel lighter, choose that. What makes you feel heavier is what you let go because, you know, if it's weighing you down, that's not of love and joy and peace and, you know, laughter. It's 
the things that make you feel lighter. What makes you feel lighter? Do those things. <clears throat> okay, next I'm going to get some clarity here um, from this uh, Light Sears Tarot. I really like the visualizations in this deck here. We'll see what else the creator would like us to know. It's a wonderful rebirth. I like the, um, the word revival too, because when you get back to basics, we get back to us, we get back to the real us inside, you know? You know. <laughs> All right. What else would you like to, us to know about our rebirth coming on this new moon? Okay, got two there. Any others? Nope. Just the two. <clears throat> yep, and I love this. This is the High Priestess. So, of course, this is the representation of that part of us that connects to our, our higher spirit that connects, you know, this is like almost like the crown chakra that we reach up and connect with uh, the divine, with our divine mother, father, you know, with the creator, with all our spirit guides, you know, we close our eyes and don't look at the world and connect to what is real, what is that deep connection that we do have with the creator of all things. This is getting into um, the unconscious to just understanding, you know, the during a new moon we're just so empty too. Like a full moon we get just blown away with emotions because that amplifies us, but during a new moon it's almost like during that silence, during that moment of inner reflection, we can just be calm and peaceful like it said here and um, I love that that's pink too you know take time to contemplate take time to understand what's most important in your life and look at that I love this too the three of cups this you know in the standard um, meanings of these is about celebration about um, the joining together but for me it, it brings a special message um, of um, spirit guides because this just came about with my own personal life this card came when the first time um, loved ones from the other side commuted through a reading I was doing for a dear friend and this just represents our spirit guides our angelic hosts those unconditioned love beings that are around there so I just love you know that all this is about connecting connecting to the higher realms take time to sit with and, and interact with the Creator, your guides, your loved ones, especially your guardian angels and your angels. Because they're there, you're not alone. So um, I love that for you there. And then what I'm going to do um, to end up the reading here, I'm going to pull a card here from the Sweet Dreams because it's all about the moon. It's all about the moon and our relation to interacting with the moon energy. It's always a reflection. It's a, our example of how we can reflect the light um, from the sun. You know, it's like we are the, um, we're the moon, you know, and the creator's the sun. We get to reflect. We go through periods of time in our life and phases like the moon does where um, we're reflecting on the inside where people can't see when the like it's, it's like when the sun is reflecting on the opposite side of the moon where we can't see it you know sometimes we're just have that inner joy but then when we we benefit mankind the most when we're a full moon and we brighten the dark nights for people when we can express that unconditional love outward that's when during the night we help shine light for people but Right. You got lessons. So I look for opportunity in life's challenges via my dreams and I learn the lesson. And this is so cool too. I like this because it has this vibe of when I look for opportunities in life's challenges, we can ask ourselves whenever we're going through something that we, you know, are struggling with and we can ask why did I want this to happen for me? And it's for me, right? We look at life and all the things we go through are designed for our benefit. 
when you have an attitude of that, then you don't look at it like uh, as a victim um, with life happening to us. So when we look at, okay, whatever I'm going through, let me connect to the higher and get a higher perspective and ask, why would I want this to happen for me? What am I going to learn through this? How can I grow through this? How can I understand more fully the unconditional love, powerful, supernatural, eternal spirit being that I am? How can I understand myself more through what's going on? You know, what is it reflecting back to me about myself, about how my, I'm feeling about myself? And I love that that's the things, you know, all my relationships I had whenever, um, it w you know, it was years later, of course, because hindsight's always twenty twenty. But you realize, I'm like, oh, like all my relationships, all my friendships, they all point back to me how I feel about myself because all the emotions that are going inside of me are going on inside of me, not out there. So it's triggering something inside me that I can look at. You know, emotions and feelings are flags for me to tell me, hey, you can look at something in here. But you know, when I go, no, they're doing that to me, then all my focus is about blame and judgment and ugh, fear and rejection and, you know, all those things that keep me in that loop of blame, shame, blame, shame, judge. Um, but when I go, life is happening for me, then I can look at it and go, okay, I see. So these individuals were showing me what I wanted to see about myself until I sound, I'm like, oh, okay. Because no one can love me more than I love myself. And when, um, so when they're showing me by their, what I'm perceiving their actions are meaning about me, then I'm like, oh, this is how I am judging my own self-worth. So I can look into that and investigate that. And it's a wonderful freedom that comes with that when you realize, oh, so all these emotions I was feeling were chosen by this person here, <laughs> which, you know, I've mentioned in past videos, like when I first found that out, I was a little upset, <laughs> but then I realized how empowering then, because no matter what happens on the outside, I get to choose what it means. So I get to control all that. So no matter, you know, what happens in the future, it doesn't matter because I get to choose what it means. I get to, you know, make those decisions. So I hope this brought a little bit of peace, love, and joy into your moments. You know, as always, I appreciate any support that um, you give me with any likes, shares, subscribes, any of that. Um, and don't forget, if you do want to be entered into the free drawing for a reading, um, just make a comment below. And, um, and if you can also um, subscribe to my Bread of Zen Facebook page, then that is greatly appreciated. And I do wish you all the love and joy that you can handle for the new moon. And I can't wait to see what your rebirth looks like. So enjoy. Just know I care and I love you. Bye-bye now. All right, if you chose reading number two, then this is the reading for you. And you chose the new moon card. This is a new start is coming. So we'll go ahead and put that over here. I thought we'd start off with Picking a card here from the Queen of the Moon Oracle. And as always, I like to start off just thanking the Creator for your unconditional love. And we welcome you here and we thank you for the messages you want to bring. And we also welcome all our guardian angels and angels and spirit guides and loved ones who have gone back to the other side, our ancestors and any other of those unconditionally loving beings that want to help you with your messages. We thank you for your presence and your love. And what we want to ask um, for this reading, I'm going to just kind of get guidance on, what would you like us to know about our rebirth for the new moon? So what's our first message? It's for the rebirth for the new moon that's coming up. Okay, really, for that one wants to speak to us here so let's look at that we've got realization i love that a giant keyhole 
You're standing at the doorway going into a new place. And I love that because for me that just says this is you're the key for that transition for that movement into the new place there. And that's number three. If you are to numerology or if that means something special to you then just know that and we'll read from here too. This is the waxing crescent one, which is realization. It says, with self-awareness comes a realization. Knowledge is power. Self-examination of your role within a situation is important. The little phrase that comes with this is, I have timely self-awareness and act upon my realizations. As we move into the early waxing cycle, light begins to shine upon the shadows, illuminating what is. This is the beginning of a powerful process, realization. When we decide to really examine our lives without fear or favor, it can be hard. This is, no doubt, an act of courage. We might not like what we discover, after all, yet without self-awareness and the will to act upon those realizations, whether we perceive them as negative or positive, we do not get to change and grow. So the realization that <clears throat> we have a pattern, a bad habit, or behavior that's causing us pain is a powerful position, even though we may feel worry and pain around this discovery. We can then take personal responsibility to change our situation since we know our current position. Knowing ourselves more completely enables us to accept ourselves more readily and to dare to love exactly who we really are. I love that. And the companion stone that comes with this um, is aventuring. And, and that is an adventure. <clears throat> um, so I love that. So the message for the new moon here with the new start coming is that you're going to have new realization about yourself and um, something that's kind of been gnawing at you that keeps coming up over and over and over and over. You know, this thing that keeps causing you pain and anguish and anxiety or that fear that um, you're going to be able to get to the bottom of it and have like this realization about it. So I love that for you. Um, next, I'm also going to pull a card here from the Return of Spirit deck just to get a little more guidance on here for us. And I love this card. It kind of reminds me of, um, I think it's, it's like the Five of Pentacles in the Tarot deck where um, in the deck I'm going to be using here after this card here um, it has someone that's just so devastated you know sitting with their head down and there's a locked door behind them um, and they kind of just feel like they're in their last hope but the key is also behind them and I love it because it just uh, it kind of reminds me of that that this little individual like that other person you have the key you are the key to unlock that so all right what other message do you have for us? For those that chose reading number two, okay, I feel like this one wants to be looked at here. And I love this. This is the star seed, which, um, if you're not familiar with star seeds, it just means um, that you have a, a specific, um, like a spiritual posse up above, that you are a part of. Uh, like a star group you know we're all made all this all this energy we're all made from the same stuff like stardust you know because it all came from something this is made from the earth from the soil from what comes from the stars and I'll read what um, and I love that this is the color of the crown chakra too I'll read about the star seed here and if you don't believe in star seeds, you know, I always say just take what resonates with you. And if nothing resonates with you, you leave that behind. But to see what resonates with you, just to keep an open heart. So it says the loving, benevolent being on this card has come to you today to share his words of encouragement. There are many who feel as though they don't belong here on earth. 
It can be a tough journey with many experiences and obstacles to overcome. You no longer have to question whether you are supposed to be here or not, or whether you belong. You most absolutely belong here. I feel like I want to read that again. You most absolutely belong here. Your soul has chosen this incarnation for many reasons, and the universe has brought you here for a reason too. Do not doubt the wisdom of it. You are a very sensitive soul, connected to the subtle energies that weave and ebb throughout the entire cosmos. You may find that you are acutely affected by the moods or thoughts of others as well. Although at times it may not feel like it, this is a gift. It is a special part of your makeup and blueprint. Your keen ability to sense and intuit these energies is an aspect of the gift you are here to bring to the planet. You could be any type of healer or teacher, but this largely depends on whether you choose to hide away from the world or to engage in it. At times, it may be easier to just hide away, but that is not what you have come here to do. You carry a high frequency, and through your everyday contact with others, you're sharing it. As you allow yourself to open up to the world around you, you'll find yourself opening to the higher information and energies as well. Usually, star seeds are guided and directed by beings of a cosmic galactic nature. This can sometimes mean that it takes more effort and patience when communicating with our guides. The Starseed card asks that you consciously work on developing your connection with your guides. And there is information waiting for you. Beautiful. You know, one thing um, that this kind of generates within me as well is we are um, very empathic beings. Just all humans have the ability to feel each other's emotions. And depending on what you know, astrological planets and signs and numerology and just all the ingredients that went into this character that you chose, like this avatar that you chose to be in this lifetime. You know, you chose certain strengths and certain opportunities. But the strengths, you know, sometimes there are individuals that choose to have such a high amount of that empathic abilities where you pick up on the emotions of others, you know, um, that it can become overwhelming. And like you mentioned, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel like a gift. It's like, oh my gosh, it could be such a burden to feel the emotions of seven, you know, plus billion people. But it's such a powerful um, gift that is given because not only can you feel all the emotions of everyone, you also can influence the emotions of everyone. The amount of energy, that unconditional love energy that you have inside you, you can influence the collective of emotions that are on the planet. So though you feel all this you know, emphasis, just know that you also can flip that around and influence all the emotions that are going around. So rather than focusing on how it's impacting you, look at how you can impact the world through giving of that powerful love energy that you have inside you. All right, next I'm going to pull a few cards here. Um, this is the deck I was talking about, the Light Sears Tarot that had that card that looks similar to this one, and we'll see what additional messages we have about the New Moon Rebirth that you're about to have for next Saturday. Right. What else would you like us to know about the Ooh, okay. The new moon rebirth. Any others? Okay, I feel like that one and yeah, that one. <clears throat> okay, this one that went flying out. This is beautiful. So this is the nine of wands, and you can see here that um, this individual is holding this. This is the Ace of Wands, which is like the magic wand. It's the ability to just spark um, 
you know, ideas to do things, just that spark of uh, energy and drive to accomplish things in life, to have passion about life. And you'll see that um, this little, these other wands, since this is the Nine of Wands, these other ones are kind of blocking, um, almost pretending to block because if you see it's like at her knees, you can just step on over it very easily. So um, you're almost there, you know, the Nine of Wands is towards the end. Don't give up, keep that drive, keep that fire, you know, going there. Um, you're making all the steps that you, you need to. You're almost at the end, just go ahead and step on over the finish line there. And kind of look at that, just the finish line. You're so close, just step over. Don't give up, don't give up. And you have the Knight of Pentacles here. Um, out of the four knights that are in the deck, you know, this is the only one that's not of like action. All the others are about go, 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 and dive in and and move quickly. But this one you can kind of see is do, 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 do. <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles. The Pentacles are the external world and all those um, things in life that we desire and we plant seeds for. And so this is just like, yep, just keep planting your seeds and watch it grow. Have the patience. Everything is going to come in its due time and its season. Just keep nourishing it. Keep nourishing your dreams. Keep nourishing your what you're headed towards in life. And, you know, like that nine of wands, just keep going. Um, you don't need to pluck anything up. You got, um, I love how this giant pentacles on the back, like a turtle almost. Like you have everything you need inside you, on you. You know, you are all you need. So everything else is just extra anyway. So just enjoy the journey, enjoy the path. You know, get grounded, take off your, you know, spring is coming, woohoo! For those of you that like spring and summer, you know, you can take off your shoes and walk in the grass and connect to nature and, you know, get grounded, but just enjoy the process. <clears throat> yep, and I love this, you know. I love that it's not like, oh, it's not as scary. This is, you know, death, rebirth, and you can see like the um, infinity symbol in here, which for me is all about cycles, right? It's like the moon cycles too. It's always, you know, this, the, uh, the moon goes, you know, dark, and then it goes full, and then it goes dark, and then it goes full, and then it goes dark, and then it goes full. You know, it's like always the process there. And, you know, especially with this being the new moon and this being a new start, you know, this is about letting that thing, this realization that's going to come, you know, you're going to allow, you're going to be able to look into the mirror, you're going to be able to look into yourself and go, yep, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm able to let that go because it's no longer serving me. And so when that, it's almost like seasons too, you know, when when the fruit tree has borne all its fruit and it goes into winter and then that it becomes dormant and it becomes you know um, appears dead almost and then spring comes and new birth and new new blossoms come and new fruit so just know you have a time of death and rebirth but don't fear it it's not the death of you know <laughs> yourself or your loved one this is about the ending of a cycle and ending of a habit so you can move on to new things for you right. and then lastly i'm going to pull a card here from the sweet dreams because it's all about the moon the moon and the stars we'll see what final message we have here Your final message is connect. It says, I create strong emotional connections with the important people in my life. Um, and I like this because it almost feels like, so disconnect from those people in your life that are not bringing you that positive energy, that positive things and um, and also, you know, just things that are not bringing you 
you know, making you feel lighter, making you feel joyful. Um, and then connect to those things that do make you feel happy, that do make, you know, um, your heart sing. So I'm going to leave it at that. I don't have anything else coming through. So hope that brought a little bit of clarity for your new moon coming up. And I do wish you all the joy and peace for this new moon that's coming up for you. Um, if this did resonate with you, of course, I appreciate any support with any likes, shares, or subscribes for this video here. And don't forget, if you do want to have the chance at a free reading, just um, comment in the description box below here um, of, of this video. Just comment. Um, and then also just have um, subscribe to my Facebook, Bread Zen, as well. And that link will be down below, too, if you're not already a member of that. Um, and then I will draw um, on the new moon next Saturday. And we'll, so we'll see who the lucky winner is. All right. Well, I do appreciate you. I love you. And you have a good one. You take care. Bye-bye now. All right, and if you chose reading number three, then this is the reading for you. So you chose the full moon in Pisces, and this is about balancing spirituality and practicality. So balancing the heavens with the earth there. Beautiful picture there. So we'll dive into this one. And for this reading, we're gonna look at just asking you know, the creator, where can we use guidance on our inner balance? Like, what would you like us to know about that? And let's start off by pulling a card here from the Queen of Moon Oracle. And I just always like to start off a reading just thanking the Creator for your unconditional love. And thank you for being here with us. We also welcome all our angels and spirit guides and loved ones. All our ancestors and beings of unconditional love, we just thank you for being here and we thank you for your unconditional love. All right, and what would you like us to know about our inner balance for the new moon that's coming up here? Okay, there we go. And we got Will. Love the little masquerade picture here and all the cycles of the moon there. Waxing Gibeus will. That's number 13. So if that has special meaning for you. And this is about decisions that require action. You are in control of your own decisions in life. No one else's. Passion and will determine a great proportion of your success. You will persist. You possess free will, which means you should focus on yourself first and avoid placing your will over another's. I love that. And the little phrase that comes with this is, I have the will to make the changes I need. Will feels like a very old fashioned concept. In a modern world where it seems like everything is geared up to be as easy as possible, or there is always someone else to blame, <laughs> the idea of placing our personal will persistently into something seems quaint. When we decide we're going to change something in our life, let's say a particularly negative pattern or bad habit, breaking the old way to do things can be difficult. The change requires a concentration of our will. We may want the change, but it is our will that insists we stay on the path to that change. To be willful means we have the power of control over our own actions, and that will fires up the persistence we need to get what we want. Contrary to popular belief, in witchcraft traditions, practitioners do not interfere with another's free will. This means we do not cast spells upon people to influence their behavior. How do we get what we want instead? We cast on ourselves in line with our will, focusing carefully on what we would like in our lives instead. For example, instead of casting a spell to get back our ex-boyfriend who doesn't want us by influencing his will to love us again, we more ethically cast upon ourselves for our ideal partner. 
This way, we don't interfere with his free will, and if the ex is our ideal partner, he will return to us freely. If not, we have attracted someone new and better for us. Either way, win-win! <laughs> I love that. To use our will productively, we should assess what we really want and make sure this is what we want to reach for. And the companion stone on this is hematite. And I love this when it talks about, you know, our free will because, um, you know, life is like this huge improv and all these situations come into our life, but we are the ones that decide what it means about us. And so I love how, um, you know, the uh, influence for the balance is your balance between your spiritual and your, you know, physical realm is looking at your will. And sometimes it's thy will be done, not mine. And so giving up that um, attachment to what we want to have happen allows the Creator to bring so much more into life th than we can imagine. It opens up a world of possibilities. Like I was talking about, you know, if we're like, God, please bring back that person into my life. And, you know, the, the Creator's like, well, it's really not the best thing for you. I've got so much more to bring you. And it's like, but I want that. You know, it's almost like, um, you know, um, I, I'm seeing this picture of like a half-eaten um, ice cream bar that got dropped in, you know, on a sandy beach. And you're like, I want my ice cream. And like, well, I'm gonna, we can go get a brand new one. No, I want that one. <laughs> and you're just like, but we can get a whole new one. You know, and I'll even give you two scoops on an ice cream cone. No, I want that one. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, so, uh, you know, when we go, all right, whatever you feel is best for me, you know, and inviting the creator and our angels and our guides to bring us those messages, bring those things that are for our highest good, we become co-creators. And so we still always have our free will and our power of choice, which they will never interfere with. But if we ask them, then that's our will and they'll be like oh yeah they're totally um in to help us so there you go the will um next i'm going to pull a card here from the return of spirit deck just to get additional messages here for us let's see what else we have what else would you like us to know about our inner balance? All right, Creator, what else would you like us to know about our inner balance? What else would you like us to know about our inner balance, please? Okay. Music. I love this because, um, you know, as soon as I saw that, I, you know, the little, what was it called? epidrome or something drums where it's like ch -ch -ch -ch. it's that balance right it's that balance that keeps the timing that keeps um, everything in harmony let's see what other messages the card has here for you so it says music plays a very important part in our energetic and physical well-being Music and certain binaural rhythms have the ability to aid us into altered states of consciousness. Music can calm us down, rub us up, and affect our mood in many ways. It can assist in the physical release of disease and alter, alter our cellular frequencies. It can also affect the vibrational energy patterns within a space. Your guides are asking that you start to integrate music more into your everyday life. It is important to help shift and move energies within your physical body and auric field. Take time to move, flow, and dance to the music. It doesn't matter what kind of music it is, just as long as you feel good when you listen to it. Music plays a more important role in your well-being than you may be aware of right now. This card also comes to those who have musical gifts, talents, and abilities. Firstly, Spirit is acknowledging your gifts. They are also encouraging you to continue to grow and develop your talent and to be open to sharing your sound with the world. 
Whether you're a musician, a singer, or sound healer, it's important that you don't give up on yourself or your gifts. Time to stop holding back or doubting if this is what you're meant to do. Music is a universal language and physical manifestation of divine energy in full expression. It's time to turn up the radio or dig out your MP3 player. Sing out loud like no one's listening. Dance free like no one's watching. Get a little crazy and wild. Have fun and enjoy it. Make music a part of your everyday routine and watch your energy, mood, and creative force blossom. I love that. I love that because music has always been a huge part of my mood, you know, and sometimes I can see what my mood is by what music I'm playing, but then I can also alter my mood by changing that music. So I know when I used to feel angry and upset, I used to do the, you know, more the hard rock and the, you know, it just had an angry beat to it, but it just helped me feel those emotions. And there was nothing wrong with that, right? It just helped me feel my emotions and flow through them and process through them. And then, you know, when I, would play you know whether it was worship music or meditation music and all that it just takes you to a higher place and and brings you but we came here to experience all the different you know music so you don't have to stick to one genre you can you know listen to your playlist make playlist depending on your moods even and to see how it impacts your world um, i love too that it also is about what you hear and what you allow to come into your ears because what we allow, you know, we can filter and resist a certain amount of audible things that we're hearing or even seeing, right? But when our appetite is constantly negative stuff, whether it's news that we're always listening to or people's negative opinions or negative, 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 div you know, divisive things, things of fear, not things of unity and love and the creator, you know, whatever we focus our energy on grows as well. So that was another message that came with that. All right, and then I'm gonna pull a few cards here from the Light Sears Tarot, just to see what additional messages the Creator has for us. What else would you like us to know about our inner balance? What messages? will help us with our inner balance or you want us to know about our inner balance just guidance 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 we just want to hear from you please okay just feel that one any others okay, that one and any others okay no so it's just these two Yep, I love this because this is the inner balance kind of card for me for the, and this is the page of pentacles, so it's balancing the external world. And you can see kind of, if you look really close here, there's roots growing out from the bottom, um, going down here um, into the ground. So that's about becoming grounded and centered and balanced and see how they're balancing on one, on one foot as well. And I love that for me too, this represents like being in the eye of the storm, you know, the storms raging around us, but we're standing perfectly balanced and still unaffected by what's going on in the outside world. And what this um, card also does, it's, it's like getting in connection with your love energy, you know, magic, the love energy of the creator and finding that inner you know our heart is where the true fulfillment lies not in the external world and so when we return to the eye of the storm return to that which really is stable which is the unconditional love of the creator then the external things the unstable things like defining ourselves by people you know because people are unstable they change their minds depending on how they feel or they pass away um, situations never stay the same so if we're defining ourselves by what situation we're in whether it's job or living situation or you know anything like that social status then um, that's unstable 
and, and then of course things break, deteriorate, or are stolen. So any of those things that we define ourselves by on the outside are unstable and so we're ah, out of balance. But when we focus in on the inner, then that's when we're in a perfectly stable and perfectly balanced there. There also is a connection of this of getting out into nature and um, because when we get away from all the rat race and all that stuff on the outside, we can get, um, you know, quiet. Um, there's um, this uh, shirt design that um, I just recently came across that um, I have in one of my shops is, um, you know, I get out into nature where I lose my mind and I find my soul. And that is the balance, right? If we're so much involved in the physical, then we're out of balance because we're out there whoosh, doing somersaults in the the storm that's raging around us. But when we become stabilized and you know getting out into nature helps us get rid of that focusing so much on our mind and um, we connect with our soul, we come back into balance. So getting out into nature has always been um, a way people have balanced their lives. Yep. And you have the Queen of Cups here. So this is being the queen of your emotions. Um, that cup in the middle there is our, our heart, our high heart, where we find our unconditional love. And so the cups is the emotions um, suit in the tarot. And so this is about balancing our emotions, about closing our eyes, connecting to the higher realms, remembering who we really are and connecting to this the heart, getting back to our high heart. Because you can see that she's still up to her waist in water, so she's up still up to her waist in emotion, but she's able to obtain that balance because she's connected to the stable higher love. I love that. Right, and then to end the reading here, I'm going to go ahead and just pull one card here from the Sweet Dreams, because it's all about the moon and the stars. We'll see what final message we have for those that chose the third stack, the full moon. What's the final message for our inner balance? Okay, got two that popped up there. Okay. So you got vulnerability. I allow myself to be vulnerable and honor my inner grace, wisdom, and beauty. I allow myself to be vulnerable and honor my inner grace, wisdom, and beauty. So again, pointing us back inward <laughs> and intuition, yep. Through my subconscious, I trust my inner wisdom and intuition. So, yep, it's all about getting that balance and returning to that inner, you know, return to the inner, that inner balance. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Well, I hope this did bring a little bit of clarity around obtaining your inner balance and brought you a little bit of peace, love, and joy today. As always, I appreciate any support of my channel. So if you like, you know, if you like the video, share it or subscribe to my channel. I definitely appreciate all of that there. Um, also, don't forget, if you do want to be part of the free drawing for a free reading, just make sure to comment uh, in the, uh, on this video below and just have also um, subscribe to my Facebook Brother Zen channel, I mean my uh, Facebook page, and I will do a drawing next Saturday on the new moon and we'll find out who our lucky winner is. I'm excited. So um, definitely appreciate all your support. I love you to death. Yeah, take care and have a great one. Bye-bye now.